in collaboration with Brain Mind, let's talk about polygenic risk for Alzheimer's disease. While the APOE4 variant is the most commonly understood contributor to Alzheimer's risk, there are many genes, dozens and dozens, and likely hundreds of genes that can be interpreted together to truly understand a person's genetic risk for Alzheimer's disease dementia. So, for example, when someone has an APOE4 variant, that person may have a higher risk of Alzheimer's disease dementia later in life. However, what if that person also has a variety of other genes that decrease their risk? Protective longevity genes, other brain protective genes that maybe haven't been discovered yet. To truly understand a person's likelihood of developing the disease, you have to combine all of the genetic factors that we need to find, and then you also have to include the risk factors they have in everyday life. Their medical comorbidities, their vascular risk factors, whether or not they've had environmental exposures. You take all of these considerations together to truly be able to risk stratify or give an accurate estimation or percentage chance of, of is that person truly going to get Alzheimer's disease? Now, let's focus more on polygenic risk. Polygenic risk is key for the future of Alzheimer's disease. But honestly, that future is now. If we can identify these genes and understand the individual biologic pathways that each gene may take to contribute to a person's Alzheimer's disease likelihood, then maybe we can intervene against that gene to reduce their risk. For example, next to the APOE4 gene is a, another area called the TOM40. TOM40, depending on the chain length, will either increase or decrease that APOE4 variant's risk on the person developing Alzheimer's. Then there's other genes in various other places. For example, we follow a family that has the APOE4 variant throughout multiple family members, but also has multiple inflammatory genes. Inflammation can fast forward Alzheimer's disease pathology. One family, for example, has something called a TNF-alpha gene that increases tumor necrosis factor, and when in combination with the APOE4 variant, increases Alzheimer's risk by sixfold. So in that family, the APOE4 variant is a very important clue in combination with this TNF-alpha variant. If we can intervene against both APOE across the variety of pharmacogenomic and nutrigenomic ways that we've talked about, we can also then intervene against this TNF-alpha gene by using specific interventions that counteract the negative effects of TNF on Alzheimer's disease risk. For example, you may have heard about something called curcumin or turmeric. That's a supplement, but it's also an ingredient in food, in curry. It's a spice. And it has very powerful antioxidant properties that specifically may be preferentially effective in people with this TNF gene. So I bring this up as just one of the many, many hundreds of examples of how to truly understand a person's polygenic risk. We need to take a very deep dive. So how do we do that? Well, in our research program and in our clinic, we can do a variety of different ways to understand a person's genetic risk across the entirety of their polygenome. So one of the most comprehensive ways is something called whole genome sequencing, or WGS. Whole genome sequencing is a very comprehensive, as deep of a deep dive as most people go, to understanding a person's genetic code. We can then search that person's genetic code for the variety, the dozens of Alzheimer's risk genes that increase or decrease risk. And if a person's risk is increased by a specific Alzheimer's risk gene, we try to understand the biological function of that gene and intervene accordingly. So the take-home point with polygenic risk is that to truly have the most state-of-the-art, highly specified understanding of a person's risk from a genetic perspective, we need to look at all of the potential risk genes, and then we need to intervene accordingly when it comes to that person's individual risk. Now you may say, well, why doesn't everyone get all these tests? This sounds like a great idea. We can understand a person's genetic code. We can intervene. That's how we can truly prevent Alzheimer's disease. Well, the problem is, is it's very tedious. It's labor intensive. 
It takes a whole team of multi-specialty experts, and it's costly. Now, the good news is about five, 10 years ago, this would cost tens and tens of thousands of dollars, and then you'd need a highly experienced expert team, and it would take you know weeks, just weeks, to just understand one person's genetic risk and put together a plan. Nowadays, it's a little bit easier, but it's still challenging. Now it costs several thousands of dollars, plus a smaller team. As an example, I'm a physician, I'm a neurologist by training, and I work with a neurogeneticist and a nurse practitioner. And the three of us, in combination, will review the genetic code, the genetic information that we get through whole genome sequencing or other forms of less expensive and less comprehensive genetic testing. And then we put together a plan. So if a person has a specific longevity gene, we can then know that their risk may be attenuated. If a person has an inflammation gene, we may know that we need to intervene across that pathway. Another aspect that we find sometimes is something that's related to an infection. So herpes, as one example, has been implicated as a potential causative agent in people developing Alzheimer's disease. Well, maybe people with that herpes-specific gene that makes them more preferentially affected in a negative way due to the herpes virus, which is very common, ubiquitous, 80 to 90% of people, as an example, have the herpes simplex one virus. But if we can understand that a person, say, has an ApoE4 variant and has a herpes simplex gene that makes them more susceptible to the negative effects of the virus, then maybe those people need an antiviral agent against herpes to suppress the viral replication and thus suppress the inflammatory cascade and suppress the likelihood of amyloid, the pathologic protein that builds up in people's brains decades before symptoms. If we can attenuate that, we can then protect against, delay, or possibly prevent Alzheimer's disease. So, polygenic risk is very confusing. There's the polygenic risk score that we can calculate to understand a person's risk in a more precise way. But the future of Alzheimer's disease that we can honestly start doing now in most ways but it's very labor intensive, is precision medicine, using a person's genes to personalize a plan, understanding their biology, understanding their cholesterol, their metabolism, their inflammatory markers, their nutritional markers, and then putting together multiple pieces of the puzzle to give a precise and in detailed plan.